Okay, so that's the uh, project overview dashboard of NYB Advanced Construction, a sample of what can be achieved on a dashboard. I'm logged in as myself, Brian James. I'm in the construction uh, tenant of the system. I'm on the Rapid Bytes company entity. And this is our demo system. This is Momentum Demo 2. That's the URL we look at. So, a sample of a project overview stuff like uh, pie charts and uh, bar charts, lots of drill downs, URLs taken back to actually project themselves, even got on site camera kind of thing, access, and so on. So, a typical project manager would sit with this screen on his desk on a daily basis. Let's look at project 126, for example, being this. Uh, building a home, a residential home, drill down to it. And that comes actual project data. So this project master file such contains the various tabs. So a summary tab, task tab, revenue tab, so on and so forth. So this is the actual project itself happening. So it starts off with who it's for, how we're going to record it, how we're going to build it out on demand building, who the customer is, uh, do we have retentions? If so, at what level, what percentage? Linked to the other parts of the system. We have things like tasks, so that all the tasks on the project itself, each task would have its own like billing status and start and end dates, a completion percentage, etc. Those tasks then in turn link to a revenue side of things or a revenue budget and a cost budget. So, for example, the, how much we're going to get for each of those tasks and the cost of those tasks. And it's brought together then on the balances tab. The balances tab then collates both the income and expense tabs, bringing them together like a profit and loss, showing you the original budget, what's been spent to date, what's been committed, and commitments, changes, and the highest budgets. So going back to the summary again, this information would have started off as a quote. I'm going to go down the quote. So it came from quote number 14. So you have a, a project quote on the system, which can be built from a template. So the template around this case was a, a new house domestic. Look at the template itself, you'll see basically it's a replica of the project, what was there in the beginning. So the tasks, the revenue, et cetera, and costs are all set up as predefined templates, meaning you can quickly create a quote and then create the project at the same time. So going back to the actual project quote, then you have things like your estimations around your unit cost and selling prices against each of those tasks. And again, those tasks can be as detailed as you like and linked to cost codes, cost groups, etc. Notice you've got a upload files from, from file. In other words, you can actually import this data from a third party like Excel or ProIst, bring it into the system as your project quote. So this quote they can act then with back and forward with activities to your client, getting it uh, going out in different versions and recording the whole sales process around the quoting. Once you've won the job, then you can convert it to a project and thus becomes this project 126. So let's go back to it. Here we are back in project 126 again. It's been built from the quote. It's now ready to go to start recording the actuals. All right, I'm now going to log in now as a site person. So I'm going to go into my mobile app and get the phone going and pretend I'm now on the site doing certain things. So I'm just going to get my uh, team viewer up and going. So let's... Just bear with me as I get the phone working. So connecting. Connecting. There we go. Start the broadcast and countdown. Well, all right. So you can all see my phone. I'm gathering. Just going to make the screen a bit bigger. All right. So I'm now on my mobile phone. I'm going to log in as Michael Andrews into the system. So uh, on my phone, demo one, two, three, four, and sign in. So as you can see, I'm linked to the construction edition again, Rapidwise Company. I'm logged in as Michael Andrews, and I can do a whole bunch of things. 
as you can see on my screen, I've got stuff like expenses, approvals, events, leads, contacts. This is basically the full list. Obviously, it can be cut down to suit whatever's going to be configured for your system. So you can see project issues, purchase orders, et cetera, et cetera. This going to say do a purchase order. So I click on purchase order. I can plus down the bottom. I've come to the screen, got today's data there. I can go to supplier. There's all my suppliers. I can search for it. For example, uh, I may have somebody with a tool in it. So there's global industrial tools. I'll select them. I can go down there and say what I want to do. Go to my details tab. Again, I'm going to add details to the purchase order. I can order stock items, so it's like a stock system if I wanted to, or skip that and just have a basic non stock item, widgets maybe, and the unit measure, features. Uh, how many do I want? Let's say 58 of them. Done that. And the cost price for my supplier, he's told me on the phone, is uh, about $25. Done. All right, so I've got 1450 for my PO on the system. Going down further, I can define then which project does it belong to. So I click on the list again. I can then again search for my projects. So I know it's 126, or I could have typed in the name as home or the customer. And there it is, the signal story project home. Then I define a project task. So one of those tasks, what does it belong to? I can say it's a big part of, say, for example, the, the rendering side of it. And the cost code to the framing as well as the rendering, a promise date and a due date. And there's my PO done. Go back there and save it. So from a mobile device, I could say raise POs, I can do receipts against POs, I can do timesheet entry. Uh, another feature is the daily field report. If I click on daily field report, I've got one there from yesterday, still open. I'm just going to open it up. So the daily field report will allow you to do things like setting up uh, change requests, change orders, determining subcontractors, like who's been on site, for example, subcontractor there. We had the SAR hardware came on site. So there's three guys on site from seven till three o'clock, eight hours, and they did the following. And to that, you can attach documents and photographs as well, etc. Back again, stuff like a raising project issues on the system, photo logs, notes. Uh, there's a link to the weather system as well, so you actually call it up and link to the weather to update the system of that, that weather at that, that particular time on the contract. Uh, any visitors to the, to the site, you can record who came, why they came, what they're doing. Etc. So basically, all information can be gathered on site straight away and update to the system back to where we want it. Go back again to the main menus. Like I said, we've got stuff like the uh, actual. So, uh, request information. For example, it should be stuff here. So, you need to have more scaffolding, more heights. So, it's an issue being raised. So, an RFI can be done by on site back to the project manager to be looked at and then sent to the client or other contractors. So, all information kept in one place, updated straight away all the time. Project issues, like I said before, we raised as well, and chain requests and so on and so forth. All right, so it's going to exit out of there, sign up again, and load it down. So back to my project again, I'm here 126. So now if I, again, that's the project manager go to commitments. I'll see now, for example, I've got an extra order number 46 raised against global tools for today. So it's, it's update straight away onto the system and exactly what's going on. I can now raise the PO and go through the normal approval process of getting it approved and sent across to the supplier for delivery to site. In commitments as well, I've also got subcontractors, so I can do a subcontractor purchase order. For example, we've got one here for DB Construction, uh, number 17, that was issued out previously. As I could say, PO to a subcontractor to do a certain work, and that actually we can produce a subcontract short form contract, which can be sent out to the client, or sorry, to the subcontractor, 
putting in state how we're going to pay it and the terms and conditions of the subcontract. We can back at the same subcontract again. You've also got basically going around a history around it. So we've actually got an invoice that's come in for the subcontractor for a certain amount. We can click on that actual invoice. So the subcontractor has billed us and, and not yet paid them, but it's coming through against the subcontract. So partial invoicing against the subcontract. And as you see, we've got things like joint payees, we can pay by line, and also got the, the tracking of TPAR as well on the system. Um, while we're here, I look at the invoices tab. So invoices are invoices to our clients. So we've invoiced out to the client uh, progress billings. But you see, we've got two invoices we've sent out. So number 62, for example, was the first invoice, and that was $24,500 just about sent out to the client. There was a second invoice, number 67, went in February uh, last week. And you'll see that it records what was previously invoiced, $24,500 and keeps track as well on the retentions around it and the invoices. And again, from these pro forma invoice invoices, we can actually send out AIA reports, which gives you the structure layout of so basically a claim. So who's going to, which for contract term, conditions, any change orders going through, certifications, and the items around what was actually claimed on that invoice. So back to the project screen again, number 126, back to the summary. And um, a main one of the besides data coming in daily buying other projects is actually managing the, the budgets and the, and the costs. So back on the main screen under the inquiries, we've got, for example, a project budget forecast. That original quote that came into the system actually forms the project of the budget. We can then take that actual budget and break it down by the international periods. So this particular project started in uh, December and finished in, it's going to finish in May. So these periods here represent the, the sixth month of the 22 financial year, i.e. December, December, January, February, March, April. So we can actually go in and decide how much money we're going to get, or think we're going to get for each of those periods going down to the project. And that will apply to any or all lines on the system, all those tasks, so the fees, engineering, higher items, so on and so forth. So you can break down your estimate down to actual particular periods of how you're going to do your cash flow. And this can be saved as a revision. So as of in the January or halfway through or at different milestones, you can pull up your budget, update them and save those different copies to be then used and look forward to later on. Come back again. Under inquiries, we then have a further report called cost projection. In other words, the cost to finish the project. Again, based upon percentage complete and any revised variations put through. So you've got your original budgets, your revised budgets, your committed amount, what's been actually spent, where we're going to end up, and to complete, cost to complete. And again, this can be done time and time again, keeping different revisions around it on different dates. So obviously it'll, it'll change every month, every two weeks, as you get more and more into the project around your cost projections on the actual project itself. One more thing on construction is very important is work in progress. For example, we system allows for work in progress reporting. I'm going to uh, choose again the entire system. I'll take again my project 126, just to show you the single project. I want to report. And working program again will show us what's been originally approved, we were at estimated, the where we're happening, and what's forecasted and showing us basically the working focus side of things. And obviously that can be run then for the entire system, not just on one project. So then helps then with the end of month entries around your accounting side of the system. Giving the entire working focus for the entire all projects over all things. All right, and that basically concludes back to the project management dashboard again, concludes my little demonstration and overview of MRB advanced construction.